So let's get started and let's talk about the assessment of chest pain. A patient that is complaining about chest pain can generally be quickly uh, differentiated into two classes. There's the patient with superficial chest pain and there's the patient with deep chest pain. Uh, superficial chest pain is characteristically sharp, uh, it hurts to breathe, it hurts to move, and particularly the patient should be able to localize very specifically where it hurts. So in, in the case of superficial chest pain, this will be obvious in a case of trauma, for example, uh, an automobile accident where the airbag has blown up. The assessment shouldn't be terribly difficult as you know the cause of the chest pain and you can assess where it is. Um, for the patient that has not had trauma, superficial chest pain uh, requires a little bit of careful physical exam and I'm going to describe that. First thing is that you want to carefully palpate the ribs because you're looking for a possible rib fracture. Uh, remember in elderly people with osteoporosis they can have rib fractures just from severe coughing uh, rather than actual trauma. Uh, one thing that is helpful in assessing for rib fractures is to place the heel of the hand against the spine and the heel of this hand against the sternum, assuming that the sternum is not where the patient is point tender, and just compress the thorax. And you ask the patient, where does that hurt? What you're doing is you're actually bowing or, or flexing the ribs. And if they do have a specific rib injury, they will point to the place where it hurts. However, in my experience, rib fractures are pretty rarely the cause of superficial chest pain. Uh, a much more common presentation would be costochondritis, which is an inflammation of a joint. It's not a movable joint, it's a fixed joint, but it's a joint between the cartilage and the rib. Now, all along the sternum are cartilaginous joints with the ribs. And so careful palpation, not directly of the sternum, but down those junctions will tell you if there is specific inflammation. Uh, this is particularly important in someone that's complaining about anterior chest pain near the sternum to, to carefully assess that because of the differential being a, an acute myocardial infarction. But I want to tell you about another costochondral junction that's probably not something you normally would check and that is the costochondral junction where this cartilage which goes over to about here and where the bony rib begins and that border starts at the mid clavicle and comes down through the nipple down to the edge of the rib cage and so if you will palpate carefully down that line you may find a costocartilaginous junction that is quite tender and that's costochondritis typically is a, a diagnosis that's clear about superficial chest pain. Now deep chest pain is it, you're going to get a very different history. The patient will not be able to localize the pain and will generally vaguely vaguely refer to where the pain is coming from and it may be as well in the back as in the front. If you think of six dermatomes on the front of the chest which which correspond of course to thoracic nerve uh, one through thoracic nerve six which is about from here down to here it's all of this and an equal distribution on my back. And, and when a patient describes pain in tho those general geographic borders, front and back, but says things like heavy, pressure, aching, vague, deep type symptoms, then you have to think about all the real estate <laughs> that lies underneath there, the heart, 
the esophagus, the bronchial tubes, the pleura, uh, even the pancreas, the stomach, and of course the most emergent thing would be an acute myocardial infarction. And if there's any suspicion of an acute myocardial infarction, then of course your assessment tool is the electrocardiogram. And so a 12-lead electrocardiogram should be done rapidly in the light of a patient that is complaining about vague, deep chest pain, epigastric pain, mid-scapular back pain. All of those you need to be suspicious of an acute myocardial infarction. There are some things that could be what I would call semi-emergence, like a, a spontaneous pneumothorax. That will be quite painful, but I think that will be pretty obvious. The patient will be quite short of breath, um, and it will be in a person of pretty typical, which is thin and tall and often female, perhaps someone that has a history of emphysema or COPD.